Hello, everyone. So welcome to my session. So today I'm going to talk about the our work uh, in ARM processor. So welcome to the world of ARM. So, uh, so you, as a key feature of the ARM ARC64 processors, uh, they support uh, multiple cores. At this moment, we are still leading in this uh, industry. The average uh, in the server area uh, domain, there are usually 64 or 128 uh, cores in a single silicon chip. So that's an advantage for ARM processors. So we have more execute uh, computing unit. And at the same time, uh, vendors are trying to add more hardware accelerators into the same chipset to accelerate specific uh, tasks. So, so, so there is a point. So we need to uh, we, we need to balance between the we need to balance our jobs uh, between the cores, CPU cores, and the specific hardware accelerators. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the work we did so far in this area. So, uh, so people come to say uh, the longer your subject and then the less attention you get. So I tried uh, hardly to make a shorter one. So I'm going to touch, uh, touch uh, SVE, so which is the ARM vector solution in the server domain and the hardware accelerators in my session today. So that's a brief introduction of myself. I come from Linaro. Linaro is an organization. We work on the ARM uh, software ecosystem. So uh, today's contents, uh, we, as I mentioned, we uh, touch a little bit about the software solutions and the hardware accelerator solutions and the work we did in OpenSSL and JDK. So uh, in this session, if you get to learn something about SVE or hardware accelerators or OpenSSL, okay, I will feel uh, yeah, uh, uh, better uh, if that can help you. So why crypto is important? So uh, first thing is, so we get more and more data in the modern days. So, and the second thing is the government, uh, there are a lot of regulations rules, laws uh, enforced by the government uh, all over the world. I just checked that in Vietnam, uh, we have the, the government has such laws and also China, also US, both the government and the, the industry wide. So they required, they asked, uh, they enforced us to apply encryption on our data. So that's a uh, big stuff. So for thinking about every text files, every files, every byte we uh, store in our uh, server, in our disk, you need to do some encryption. And when you want to fetch it, you need to the uh, decryption. So that's a lot of work. Uh, the same thing goes for the uh, storage space. We need to compress things, we need to decompress. So uh, to conquer this, this need, we have uh, two methods, as I mentioned. So we have the uh, CPU processor core method, and we have the specialized hardware method. So, yeah. so let's first check the uh, ARM solutions. So in the software solution, we uh, for that we uh, most of the time we are talking about the instructions. So in the ARM world, we have specialized features, specialized in instructions like for uh, SM4, like for AES. So you can find uh, specialized assembly instructions in the uh, ARM AR, ARM ISA. So to processing such type of job. So people are are working on that to use the assembly specialized instruction to optimize their libraries. For example, the uh, er erasure code or the uh, SM4, uh, SM4 encryption library in the OpenSSL. So another software solution is to use the vector instructions, like a, a simple uh, single instruction, multiple data. So we have 
AVX solutions in the Axis 6 world. And in ARM, we have SVE. So SVE stands for Scalable Vector Extension. I will mention it later. So also ARM introduced uh, the Matrix Extension uh, recently, which is specifically useful for the AI processing. So what is SVE? Uh, so SVE uh, is a, a vector processing. It's a scalable. Uh, that means it, the register size can be defined by the vendors. So each chipset vendor can pick their uh, proper size uh, for a vector length. You know, they can choose uh, from uh, 128 bit to up to 2048 byte a bit uh, vector length. So, uh, and uh, the beautiful thing for SVE is, so you, when you, um, as a programmer, software programmer, when you write down, write your code, you don't need to care much about the actual vector length. So either it's 128 bit or it's 512 bits long. So uh, they provide the instruction mechanism to support this, to cover this for you. So in SVE, uh, th that's a bit about <laughs> too much detail. So it has uh, 32 uh, mm, registers, vector registers. Uh, as I mentioned, the vector length uh, uh, can vary from 128 bit to 2000 uh, bit maximum. And as we provide the P register, predict, uh, predicate registers. Predicate registers uh, is like a uh, mask. So, uh, you know, we, in the um, vector processing, we define, uh, we define the data uh, as a lens. So uh, the predicate register works like a mask. So you provide the P register, you provide the mask, and then you issue the instruction. So only the, only the lens uh, mark uh, has a proper mark, either one or zero here is one. Uh, so have a proper mask will be executed. Uh, so uh, you have you don't need to uh, move or uh, cover the uh, this, this lane uh, somewhere else. You just keep it here, but put a, a zero mask in the predicate register. Then issue the command. Then you get everything uh, down for you. So uh, there is an another example, like uh, it's a multiply and plus instruction. So here we can see that we, uh, with, this, with, with this uh, mask, the lane 0, 1, 2 will be processed. With 0, 3 is masked. It, it goes unchanged. So uh, that's quite uh, makes things simpler for uh, programs, programmers. So. Uh, another important feature for SV is it's uh, vector length agnostic. Uh, that means you, uh, especially in a while loop, you don't need to know the specific uh, architecture, chips, chip. You are running your software has a 128-bit uh, vector length or 256-bit of uh, vector length. You just use, uh, it, it's implied by the instruction. For example, here you have the INC instruction. So traditionally, in uh, in Neo or some other architectures, you have to know that when you increase the uh, index, the vector length is 16. That means 16 bytes, right? You process in one loop. You only uh, process uh, 16 bytes. So, but in SVE world, so what whatever it's uh, if you are running in a uh, a 128 bit machine, uh, it increase 16 bytes. If you are running on a machine with a 256 bit vector length, then it will, it will mean you increase the 
index by 32, right? When you write down your program, you don't need to care about the actual vector length. That's what it means. Okay. So beyond that, ARM released. Really? <laughs> okay, I go quick. So <laughs> uh, uh, ARM extends the SVE to more domain, SVE2, and also the matrix uh, solutions. Okay, with matrix solutions, they introduce the uh, bigger file, register file, so you can uh, process the, uh, like uh, do some, some complex stuff like the outer uh, product or two vector. Okay, so now let's go to the hardware accelerator. So hardware accelerators is another solution. Uh, we know that uh, sometimes the CPU frequency, their capability goes to a limit. So uh, there is chance that we use specific hardware to do specific uh, computations. Uh, like in uh, Kunpeng uh, 920 uh, chipset, that's the uh, chipset provided by, manufactured by the high silicon. Uh, so th inside this chip, uh, there are four uh, accelerators uh, working on, on compression, security, uh, and so something more. So we are going to uh, explain the security part it can do the AES uh, encryption decryption. It can accelerate SM4 encryption decryption as well. So to support that, uh, Linaro worked with High Silicon, developed the UADK framework. So this is a software framework, but it uh, works for the, uh, the purpose of this software is for to support the hardware uh, accelerators. So in it, it is uh, constructed based on the SMU technology. Uh, with SMU, you get the same virtual address between the device and the, your program, your, uh, your code. So you just need to give the virtual address to the device and then do the, it will find it through SMU, your device can find the proper physical address. Okay, uh, there will be another session today in this room uh, from my co colleague. So if you want to learn more details about UADK and the underlying technology, you can welcome come uh, to uh, join his session. So, okay, we mentioned uh, software acceleration, we mentioned hardware acceleration. So now how can we get the most efficiency, most capability out of it? So that means we need to find some balance. Okay, so we build some balancing strategy. <laughs> we consider some how and in which conditions we put the jobs to which processor, being the software accelerator or the hardware accelerator. We consider the CPU, we consider the memory bandwidth. So when we define the strategy, we need to consider all these uh, criteria. Here uh, in Linaro, we uh, define uh, this solution. We, it's based on the OpenSSL 3.0. So there are uh, pretty new features comes with the OpenSSL. Uh, so if OpenSSL 3.0 was released uh, last year, and yeah, uh, the, the older version, previous version OpenSSL 1 is uh, obsolete so far, right now. So the new features here is each application can define their own context. Within the context, it can load their own provider. Provider means a execu execution unit, like an um, implementation. So you can, pro um, you can uh, register uh, different uh, multiple uh, implementations to the same library context. And it also provides a method saw. So when you when the user application want to fetch it, that means you want to find some uh, processing unit uh, processing uh, implementation uh, unit. It needs to fetch f 
from the method store first. So that's the something new. So based on that, you, you will know that we do the balance by implementing a load balancing provider. That's a special provider. So your application just need to register with this single provider register. And then you load uh, the other providers into your uh, your uh, applications context. And then in the load balancing provider, get the mirror of the real uh, provider. OK. <laughs> the real provider. So uh, in your application, it's about here. It's called the. It, it uh, combined the load balancing provider, and this provider will have the information of the, all the other providers you uh, registered, you uh, loaded. Okay, so uh, with a strategy in which is implemented the load by, by the load balancing provider, your application can go between, go among the all the child providers. So to find the uh, best candidate for their uh, for their job. Okay. So uh, then we implemented a uh, we use the Java. You know, most of the applications in the big data world right now is in the uh, written for, by Java. Uh, so there are uh, Hadoop. Uh, HBase and much more. So we need to uh, export this capability, the load balancing capability, to the uh, Java world. So the, our method is to implement another. They call. Uh, they also call it provider in the Java world. Sorry about that. So people like this name, I guess. So uh, the KE provider will in the Java. It will call the uh, load balancing provider and then load balancing provider will help you help the application to allocate the to assign the tasks to either the hardware provider or the software provider uh, it's also easy for use to use you just need to change one line in your JDK Bison JDK is the version uh, derived from the open JDK project uh, and it's uh, open source by High Silicon, Huawei. Okay, so here are some. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, okay. I need, just need two more minutes. Okay, thank you. And uh, here are some uh, measurements. So we see with the load balancing feature uh, at the same. Uh, CPU utilization, like the red one, we get higher uh, bandwidth. So similarly, uh, here, uh, same CPU utilization, we get higher. Uh, and here is uh, to get the uh, same bandwidth we use with the balancing. We can we, we just need lower CPU uh, utilization. So. Uh, here is another demo we did on the uh, HDFS Hadoop file system. So with our method, uh, we can achieve about 30% performance gains. So with jobs assigned to both the hardware accelerator and the uh, CPU software core. Uh, sorry, a software accelerator. OK, yeah. Uh, as in for open source software, we always welcomes your contributions. Here's our project. Uh, this project is incubating under the Open EULA Big Data SIG. So welcome to uh, lo log in, join the community to check the code, to, uh, you know, to find the way to utilize your hardware better. So uh, again, I'm from Linaro. OK, <laughs> that's almost it. <laughs> Linaro works on uh, ARM software. Yeah. Welcome to ping us yeah, for any uh, service request. <laughs> Thank you.